Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I watched Survivor Winners at War Episode 4. Spoilers ahoy if you haven't seen this episode yet and you don't want to find out who gets voted off, who wins challenges and all of that stuff, then stop listening and go watch this episode now. Um, so this was another good one. It had me yelling at my screen and all that. Um, like I've said in, my, in previous episodes, um, I am playing a, f- a fantasy league of uh, Survivor. And actually, I need to see. Let me, let me pull that up and see what points I got for this episode. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, well, I only got three points for this episode, but I'll get into that deeper as we progress through this, uh, through the events that unfolded. Um, so everybody goes back uh, to camp at, at Sele after the uh, last tribal council where we saw um, uh, Ethan voted off after uh, Adam spilled the beans on the whole plan to vote out Parvati. Um, so Adam was the only person who voted uh, voted for Parvati. Everybody else from his alliance changed their vote to vote out Ethan and then uh, – Ethan, Rob, and Parvati all voted for Adam. So Adam only uh, only survived by one vote uh, there because there are four votes for um, for Ethan. Um, so Ben goes, Dad, gummit, Adam. So I wrote that down. I like those. Who who says Dad, gummit? Ben does apparently. Um, and then, uh, we also got a glimpse over at, uh, Dekal. Is that the name of that tribe? Oh, my, my big chart of everything is already thing. Um, is on the other side of the room laying on a, a table. So I can't read it from here, but anyhow, uh, the red tribe, I thought it was interesting that they could, they can see edge of extinction from their beach or fairly, a fairly close distance away from their beach. I think they may have like hiked a little ways um, to be able to see it, but like you could see like the people that are out there and everything. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Surely the camera, the cameras have, have better vision and zoom to be able to actually see the shape of the people and all of that. Um, It's very unlikely that they, they could see out there and identify who the new, uh, uh, person joining Edge of Extinction is, but maybe they could. They could make a, a solid guess at it if they could uh, make out that it's a guy, and um, you know the the sort of shape of their hair. Um, I think they could probably figure out um who that it was Ethan who joined them. But anyway, overall, speaking of Edge of Extinction, they all get an opportunity to opportunity to earn fire tokens so this i believe is the first time that new fire tokens are brought into the game um all of the other transactions earning them all that have been trading uh uh, of fire tokens that were already in the game at the start the 20 fire tokens that we began with but now we have the opportunity for four more to be into the game because this does not rely on anybody buying anything who are still in there uh, it is just for the Edge of Extinction people, and that task is to go all the way up to the top of their island and one log at a time bring firewood back down to their camp. There's 20 pieces for each of them, and that is kind of crazy. Um, Ethan got super exhausted, um, had medical come check on them. He got recovered a little bit. They said, Take it easy. Remember to take breaks if you're gonna if you're gonna insist on keep on doing this. But you can. They did allow him to continue to do it. They didn't force him to stop. So that was a good sign um, that things weren't so dire that they had that he had to be medevaced from Edge of Extinction. That would have been crazy. Um, so all of them finish. Uh, Ethan took the longest, and uh, the others went with him to uh, do his last trip. And that was really cool. Um, they were like really bonding together. Like I think the people on Edge of Extinction, even though they shouldn't, because only one of them or maybe two of them are going to get back into the game at, at some point. Um, 
they're going to have the closest bonds of anybody in the game so far because they're not, well, we'll see once the people who, more people join them because everybody who's been voted off so far has been like either on the outs or they're already friends with the people who are there. Um, and we have, uh, well, Natalie is the outlier and she, it seems like she kind of doesn't care. Well, she has an emotional moment um, after she finishes this task, but um, for the most part, she's like, I'm, I'm just going to keep on kicking ass out here and get as many fire tokens as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Danny, what did she say? Oh, she's, she's talking about how it was so hard and that uh, she thought about comparing it to childbirth, except with childbirth, at least at the end of it, you, you, you have a baby. You get a baby out of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was really funny. And, um, yeah, so, th yeah, this, this segment did seem kind of long, um, but it's, uh, I don't know. It was, it was still, it was entertaining and, uh, especially knowing how it turns out. Um, I was very worried for a while right there. So, um, Oh, I don't think we get any points for other stuff yet. Hmm. I don't know how the, the fantasy league calculates the points for people who are on uh extinction, edge of extinction. I'm not sure. But anyhow, um let's see, let's see, let's see. We have Um Adam back at uh the Blue Tribes uh camp doing all the chores he's gathering firewood he's asking people if they want uh re refills on their water all that trying to make it up to everybody <laughs> and try to get everybody to trust him again but uh rob and parvati so he's doing a really good job of not talking to them anymore like uh, to improving to the others like I i'm not going to spill the beans to them ever again but <laughs> rob decides oh wait we gotta throw him under the bus we've got to bury him so uh they claim either he, or they they don't uh they indirectly claim that he's been well no they do directly claim they go to uh jeremy and michelle and are like oh, what am i gonna do about adam he keeps trying to talk to us like man i don't even want to go there like <laughs> acting all annoyed about it and everything and they totally buy it they don't even question it for a second man freaking boston rob um so anyway uh that that was that was pretty entertaining to watch meanwhile over on the red tribe uh sarah and tyson are bonding really well and sarah is like hey let me smell your breath I'm like what are you doing it's so weird and tyson's like no i don't want you to smell my clam breath what are you talking about um and then <laughs> it's really fun like sarah and and um and tony have a really fun uh relationship to watch but also like this has been really was really fun watching this episode but um yeah they're like who's your favorite person in the world or something and then uh she's like for me tyson and she's oh for me it's sarah so it's it's so dumb but anyway uh tyson thinks that they should target the one timers because they don't have any existing relationships and that they they think that's um they're just going to target all of the the people with the existing relationships it would be a tyson or sandra or um or tony and sarah uh they, they think that they're gonna be the big targets and that they got to stick together um who's the other one that's with them it's um i, I think it was kim that they got there on their side uh because it was about it was equal um five first time winners um who hadn't played since then and five people have played multiple times but they got rid of amber so um that's kind of their bad for targeting their own person kind of well i forget how that that vote went it's so long ago it's way back in episode one but um we head over to the challenge uh which is a challenge at sea it was for immunity and for chickens um, so they had to take a boat over to a thing where they had to jump off of a, a plank to grab some keys that are dangling high above. 
and uh, the the blue team was awful, awful at this. Uh, the three people doing that were Denise, Parvati, and Adam, and they put the entire thing on Adam's shoulders because he is the only one who's able to do it, which I thought felt pretty unfair uh because he was getting so so exhausted by doing it over and over again and he was not like maybe they did have the others try um but they they just cut those out because it wasn't affecting the gameplay and he was he ultimately is the one who got all three of the keys that were up there um whereas on the red tribe they kind of breezed through it they did miss a couple of times but it was um pretty well distributed among the three who were doing it i think they may have even gotten one each but the red tribe had such a huge huge lead but sarah and nick ah uh, i it pains me to say it sarah has been in a pivotal role for every victory so far and now she's in a pivotal role for the loss she is uh working together with nick to solve the puzzle and they 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 blew it they blew it they ended up taking it back apart and starting over again where the way they were putting it together, they sh it should have worked that way as well. Because it seemed like they were putting it together upside down from uh, how the other tribe did it. And that should have also worked, I think. Because it, it was sym it's symmetrical 100, or, or, or it's the same, like... I don't see how it would have changed everything because it didn't seem like it, all the stuff, the stuff that was fitting together was still fitting together. So I, I don't know. Maybe it was the order that they put stuff in that left some gaps or something. I don't know, but whatever it was, Sele made a huge comeback. Rob and Michelle who blew it in the last challenge in the puzzle portion. Um, I mean, they didn't blow it by much. They were really close to, 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 to be, to winning there. But this time they did win. And so uh, for the first time since episode one, since the second tribal council, we see the red tribe, the call, go to tribal council. So they all head back to the beach. Tyson wants to target Nick. He tells everybody, let's vote Nick, make it easy, all together. And Tony is worried. That seemed really easy. As it turns out, Many of the people who are not closely aligned with Tyson are thinking, let's get Tyson out, especially Wendell. He is the one that seems to first bring it up. Um, and Sandra comes down to be in the swing vote, potentially. Um, and she says, uh, I, as much as I want to get Tyson out of here, I love $2 million more than I love revenge. So uh, over at Tribal Council, uh, they talk about how the vote would reveal all of the sub groups. Um, and uh, let's see, they're, they, they're making the pitch to stick to the tribe at everybody's making this pitch that they'll stick together with the tribe uh, after the merge or the swap. That they'll all be loyal to each other because it's about the game. It's not about the existing relationships and all that. And that they can work together. And they right now they have they still have the majority even after this vote, etc. Um, if there's a merge or if there's a swap, potentially the swap could really mess things up for a lot of people. Um, but anyway, they get to the votes, and actually, I'm gonna pull up and see who voted for who because I didn't I didn't write that down. Um, cause I don't, I don't know if they actually even showed it or if they did, it was like in the picture in picture watching on the CBS app and it was like saying what to watch next. And like every time that happens, I'm like, ah, I don't, I want, I don't want it to automatically do that. And I want to be able to see what's on the screen. I can't read it when it's all small. It's like, it's not even a quarter size of the screen. It gets to like one eighth of the screen. It gets picture in picture in picture. But, um, yeah, let me go look that up real quick. Okay, so this vote was kind of interesting. Tyson seemed to have no idea that he was the target. Like, so this is an actual blindside where nobody said the word blindside miraculously until now in all these reviews about it. But uh, we had seven votes for Tyson. Everybody, everybody wrote down his name except for Tyson, of course. He wrote down Nick's name. And then Nick, oddly, did not write down Tyson's name. He was afraid that uh, he explained in his confessional and, and like there was no mention of this before this point. 
Uh, but at least we did get the explanation there right at, at right at the end. He explained that he was afraid that Tyson might have a, a hidden immunity idol, and if he played it, that would mean that Nick would go home because there's only there there just be one vote. Assuming every, all everything went to plan, otherwise, uh, if he also voted for Tyson, then eight votes for Tyson would be neutralized and Nick would go home. So he voted for Kim, so at least it would go to a tie, and then they'd all have to decide between the two of them. And so he would still stand a chance. Um, so that thinking did make a lot of sense. It was interesting. Like, oh, okay, this, this episode was like the first we see Nick say more than like a word or going like, ah, or anything uh in this sh- in this season so far um and i'm sure we're gonna get a little bit more screen time soon especially okay so next next episode we're getting a swipe trap a, a swipe trap <laughs> a try a, a swipe trap yeah that, that works <laughs> um so yeah there will be a a, a a tribe swap next episode um and uh that it'll be interesting to see how much it messes up everybody's game and how much it messes up my my fantasy uh game but anyhow uh Nick's one vote went to Kim i i don't remember if i, I actually said that or not um so let's see some trivia here from the uh survivor.fandom.com um lots of trivia trivia here good good work everybody who contributes to this page go to survivor.fandom.com and just click around a bunch, get them some ad revenue, I guess. I don't I don't know. How do you support them? Just bookmark them and look up for all the stuff that's on there. Um, Winners at War marks the first time a country is used. Oh, this is for the this is general season trivia. Um, it's the first time a country has used eight consecutive times. They're in. Where are they? Is it is it Fuji? Fiji. Fuji. Fuji isn't a thing. It's Mount Fuji is a thing. Fiji is the, the islands. But uh, let's see. This is the first season to have its number displayed on the logo. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, it's yeah. It's on the. Oh, okay. It's on the. Um, it's on the ship. So uh, that's a good way to integrate it into there. Um, it does have some context to it. Um, This is the first season to have castaways in a familiar relationship compete against each other in a non-blood versus water season. Uh, So it'd be Boston Rob and uh, and Amber, Amber, with Danny representing Survivor Guatemala. The oldest season where no first time castaway has returned is now um, Survivor Caramoan. Okay, wait, what what does that mean? Oh, okay. I I get it. Um, so previously, there had been somebody from every season before Guatemala who has come back for another season. But that ca- the the catch to that is Guatemala itself had two returning players. Um, with uh, with what's her name? Having returned from the previous season, um, shoot, what is? Why can't I remember her name? Uh, I liked her a lot, and oh, Stephanie. I was like so. I was pretty annoyed that she she got voted off. She should have. She 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 should have. No, she didn't get voted off. She she just didn't win. She was second place. Like why didn't why didn't they vote for her? That's so dumb. Ah, <sighs> she's your one. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, what other trivia? I'm, this is trivia hour, uh, uh, but this takes care of most of the trivia of because this is full, full season trivia. Um, with w- Ben Wendell and Nick representing heroes versus healers versus hustlers, Ghost Island and David versus Goliath. Blah, 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 blah. The oldest season where no castaways whatsoever have returned is now Survivor Edge of Extinction. Oh, right. That's just the, the, the two seasons ago. No, that's last season. No. When is that? That's last season. Right? No, that's two seasons ago. I, I don't know. They, 
these are uh, some of the, the way these are, trivia pieces are, are written are just a little bit confusing to me, but uh, I think I get what they're saying. Um, Amber and Kim are the second and third castaways to play under two different last names following uh, Candace Cody, who played as Candace Woodcock in her, her first two seasons. Um, of the participating castaways, 11 are playing in their second season. Adam, Ben, Danny, Denise, Kim, Michelle, Natalie, Nick, Sophie, Wendell, and Yule. Five are playing in their third season. Ethan and Tony, who won their first, and Amber, Jeremy, and Sarah, who won their second. Uh, three are playing in their fourth season. Parvati, who won her second. Tyson, who won his third. And Sandra, who won both her first and second. One is playing his fifth season. Rob, who won his fourth. Rob is the first person to play Survivor five times. With this season, Amber and Ethan broke Kelly Wigglesworth records of 30 seasons for the largest gap between appearances in two different seasons with 32 seasons each. That's a pretty, pretty cool. Um, wait, so does, oh, oh, that's right. That's right. They were both in all stars. So they have the same record. There you go. Uh, so those are the full season, uh, trivia points from, for, from uh, survivor.fandom.com for the full season. Um, let's see if there's any good trivia on the individual episode. Uh, the episode title was said by Sandra Diaz Twain. Um, that's it's called "I Like Revenge," but not as much as two million dollars, or however she said that. Um, okay, so uh, up next we have the tribe swap. Uh, I could totally mess up everybody's games. Um, uh, also, uh, Tyson, he gives his token to Nick after saying, I'd rather just swallow it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of interesting. They would give it to the person that he was targeting. Um, that's uh, well, well, it's, it's, it's an interesting strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it pays off. Uh, or a bold strategy. That's what it I messed that up. But anyway, uh, quickly looking at my episode recap. Um, on the uh, fantasy survivor game, uh, we had three points rewarded to everybody who is on the blue tribe. So uh, at least as far as my group goes, uh, a bunch of people benefit from, from that. But luckily, I still have a good lead. I still have a three point lead uh, because I think I, I must have given three points uh, to Tyson for getting voted off because I thought he was a pretty big target. But I didn't think it was so big a target to put like all 10 of my points available for that tribe. But yeah. Um, Extinction. Oh, okay. So everybody who is currently on Extinction, they do get one point each. Um, so Danny, Ethan, Natalie, and Amber each gained one point each from this episode. Um, the way this uh, fantasy uh, game, fantasy survivor game.com works is that you get two survivors on your tribe um and it's kind of randomly selected after you rank uh who you who your preferences are um and i thought that it would be exclusive that all of the uh whoever you picked um nobody else would have the person but uh as it turns out there are some repeats a few people have yule a couple of people have tyson um i have yule, yule and tyson and so uh yeah i i I didn't get as many points as the last couple of episodes, uh, which has been the case whenever Red has dominated. But um, yeah, I did get three points because I put three points on Tyson because I thought there's a there's a chance that he'd be voted off. Unfortunately, I was correct. But at least now I have a, a, a definite one point from every episode from here on. Uh, now I'm, I'm just going to be rooting for whatever tribe Yule is on and then hope that Tyson gets back into the game. Um, and also that Sarah's continues to stay in the game. Sarah could have easily been the target instead of Nick. Um, not that it would matter because, uh, I mean, Nick was the one who was voted off anyway. But she she was responsible for the loss as much as him, I think. But I don't know. I'm I'm glad that she didn't get any flack for that, it seems like, anyway. Um, so there you go. I have, uh, 28 points in, uh, in the fantasy game and, uh, second place is 25. So, uh, booyah. 
Anyway, that's enough about the fantasy game and enough about all the trivia and all this. This episode has, has gone on quite long enough. Um, I, re- I, re- I did enjoy this episode, even though it was a real bummer to see Tyson voted off uh, for me personally, um, since I have, have, have big stakes in the game for this. But um, I will continue to root for him. Um, and I really, really thought I really enjoyed that he gets <laughs> – they showed that he gets there to edge of extinction and he just says, wow, you guys have a lot of firewood. <laughs> and, and everyone's just like, oh, you don't even, you don't even know. You know there's, we have a <laughs> reason we have so much firewood. Oh, let us tell you about it. So I'm, I'm excited to see what's in store for all of them next. And um, that is like a really, it, it is a really great thing aspect of the season for a season where your uh, your favorites like so there's so many favorites in this season um and so many of them at least for me personally so many of them are getting voted off right at the top especially now in these last two episodes but also um i was really excited to see natalie play again and um and uh, well Am- amber and danny i mean they've been uh it's they've been interesting to watch on edge of, edge of extinction and I think they're probably more interesting to watch on there than they were in the game. Because in the game, they seem like they were kind of panicking. And stuff like that. They, they may have adapted pretty quickly, perhaps, if they had survived. But I, I see them... Uh, I, I find them more interesting now that they're not in that game mode. They're in Edge of Extinction game mode, which is like very... It's, it's much more similar to old school survivor in a lot of ways but it also is like very very different from that in any way i am enjoying edge of extinction quite a lot because it's people that we already know and it's it's a chance to see more of our favorites if they get voted off um i don't think they should ever bring edge of extinction back for first time players i don't think it works for that even though we did have some returning players on that season. Um, it was a four returning. It was Wigglesworth, uh, David, Aubrey, and who's the other one? Somebody else was on there too. Who was the other one? It was another. It was another guy. Mm, oh, was it, was it Malcolm? I think it was Malcolm. Or was it Joe? Okay, I had to look it up. It was Joe. I got it mixed up. Sorry, Joe Malcolm. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. Uh, let me know what you thought about this episode of Survivor by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe out there in all the info about multiverses, and I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye.